Maybe then I move this over here, and now I Alt Z, and now it's recording the correct one. Excellent. Okay. This is dumb. Um, anyway, <laughs> ho hello and welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters, which is in and of itself also a disaster. I'm Justin Rosniak, the person who's talking right now, currently banned from Twitter uh, because I did nothing wrong. And that is true. Yes. <laughs> yes. Free, free Justin. You want to tell the tell the nice listeners what you did to catch yourself a fucking perma banned from Twitter? <laughs> Someone insulted Liam's mom, and I made a joke yes, about did. doing the Punic Wars to them, and Twitter banned me. Did you say that they had to like were they Delenda esque, or did you talk about salting? No, no their I fields? said I, I said I would burn them to the ground and salt the earth upon which they stood. Oh, as one does, and they and yeah. they banned you from Twitter, so you're free. You're free of the hell site. Yes, sweet. Uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly, pronouns she and her. I am the person who is talking now. Uh, I am Liam Anderson. I am on Twitter at Old Man Anderson. Uh, pronouns are have, he him. You what? have more followers than Justin. Yes, yes, <laughs> I do. Ha! Ah, finally, <laughs> the real star of the show comes out. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to take a moment, uh, the, the reason he got banned was because I, uh, relayed a story on Twitter, which is now more than a decade old, uh, about my mother and Rick Santorum, and people got incredibly upset, uh, people insulted me, people insulted my mother, people insulted my girlfriend, actually, um, and it's so funny to me that these people you know, are such tryhards at trolling and are just like, eh, you know, snowflakes. And like the second someone actually like responds to that, they go into these weird like spasms of uh, of of just delirium. And they're just they can't believe that someone disagrees with them on the Internet. And I'm I'm astounded. Uh, so, yeah, unbanned, do not eat. Uh, so he has something to do <laughs> as opposed to using the, well, there's your problem, Twitter, as his own. Yeah, I'm going to handcuff myself to the doors of Twitter's offices like Laura Luma until we reinstate Justin's Twitter account. <laughs> See, but I'm a good Jewish boy, so they'll listen to me. Laura Luma can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, and between we a, us, we have that thing that Laura Luma boasted about: big tits and an Ashkenazi IQ. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, just split across two people. And and we have a, a special guest today. Hello, guest. Uh, Hello. Must be wondering what he's oh. got himself into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm very happy to be here. My name is uh, Zach Simonson. I'm the chair of the uh, Wapolo County Democratic Party in Iowa. We are a county of about 35,000 people, uh, home of Radar O'Reilly and the birthplace of Tom Arnold. The uh, county seat is Ottumwa, and we just had a, uh, a bit of a caucus. Yeah, I heard yes. about this. You, you had yourself uh, 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 some kind of uh, problems in relation to some technology, right? Yes, uh, we ran 22. I haven't heard about this. Yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few people heard about this. It, it was on some of the small websites. Um, yeah, yeah. M made made like uh, news in one half of Iowa. Yeah, it was a regional event for sure. Let's cut to the chase, though. Uh, Zach, how did you personally rig the caucus for Pete Buttigieg? <laughs> 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 Justin just very slowly turning a lamp into his face. <laughs> well, no one was looking, and and so it was very easy. Um, <laughs> I did my best, uh, and I did caucus for Bernie, but it didn't work out quite the way we expected it would. Um, and that's none of our fault here uh, on the ground. We had 22 county caucus meetings uh, in each of the precincts that all went very well. Um, and reporting it turned out to be quite a catastrophe. In other places, it turns out that having the meetings was also a catastrophe. Um, but definitely the big story is the, uh, the app and the phone calls and just the nightmare that was reporting the results. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the standout from, like, all of the stories of this is, uh, poor guys like you being on hold with the state party for you know, three, four, five hours at a time and having them hang up on you and stuff. Oh, that was terrific. 
Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spe- I was speechless with rage when I saw that. Yeah, and I mean, part of it was fine for me because I took time off work because I knew I was going to have shit to do. But we had, you know, just regular people uh, who had volunteered with no expectation of what was going to happen to chair precinct meetings. And they were being called in the middle of the night or they were being yelled at over the phone. Um, And I do feel really bad for them and that that happened to them. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Politics is 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 weird enough without inflicting it on normal people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you just try and do something nice and do your civic duty, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of um some problems, shall we say? Oh, for sure, and and also like because all of these campaigns had precinct chairs who were like all of the weird people who get into politics stuff mm-hmm. had volunteered mm-hmm. for that. So when it came time to find people to just chair the meetings. These were like very, by and large, regular people who did not want to be there, um, and I'm sure they're very mad at me right now um, that this was inflicted on them. Fuck them. <laughs> I thought a, I thought a good place to start here would be, you know, just so everyone's on the same page, to ask, uh, you know, okay, what what is a caucus? What what does that mean? Uh, it's the town on the New Jersey line between Morristown and Trenton. That's. Secaucus. Stay on your side of the ocean. <laughs> Look, you have to give me some points for knowing uh, literally anything I just said. No, I give I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. I, I should get a green card out of knowing what Secaucus <laughs> is. You know what? That would make this live show a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, no, a, a caucus, I guess, is supposed to be a uh, party meeting. Um... I was told that it's an Algonquin word, if we're going to go all the way back, Um, but it is, uh, all these people in Iowa are supposed to go to their individual precinct uh, meeting, where they divide into preference groups for presidential candidates, but they also elect uh, precinct officers to do county party business, and back in 1976... Um, somebody decided that this was a better way of selecting a presidential nominee than uh, putting ballots in a box. So you you literally have a room with corners marked out for each candidate, right? Right, and when there's 11 candidates, there are a shortage of 11 corner rooms. Y- you, yeah, uh, you gotta have a lot of corners there. Just about a circle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> expect uh, expect uh, Frank Gehry or Daniel Liebeskin to get a lot more work in Iowa as a result of this system. <laughs> <laughs> Just have this beautiful sort of uh, like no Zaha Hadid kind of room. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> so there's like there's like two two rounds of caucusing, right? There's like the first alignment and the second alignment, uh, and like people yell at each other to come over to their side. <laughs> That's the only part I like, and it seems like there wasn't a loss of that. That's my absolute favorite part, is just the absolute idea of, like, sending someone, like, me, and I'll just I'll just go over to the Biden voters, and I'll be like, listen, <laughs> you can yeah, either- we, we let Liam out of containment, and, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like there was a lot of yelling, it seemed like it was all kind of fairly good-humored, and, like, yeah, that's not people... what I want. I want, like, gruesome <laughs> Tammany Hall shit. Yeah, I want Thunderdome. Yeah, I want Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, instead, it was just a bunch of sort of mild mannered Iowans sort of <laughs> shuffling from one corner to the other, uh, and being very civic and being very respectful. Is, is is that the vibe that you got when when you were administering this thing? I that is the vibe that I got here. Um, that's also been the vibe I've gotten from this whole kind of campaign cycle right now. Is that there are mm. Democrats that have no will to fight with each other. Lame. Um, <laughs> and it's really frustrating, right? Because it's supposed to be a primary election and they don't want to see people be negative at all. They don't want to see people be, you know, passionate or competitive or mm. anything like that. Um, right. And it, I think it happened in some places, but for the most part, um, our meetings were definitely uh, low on the uh Iowa caucus branded um, passionate speechifying and <laughs> shouting and standing on things. Uh, we didn't get much of that this year. Uh, the precinct that I was actually in, I had to volunteer to lead a meeting for a precinct we couldn't get a chair for. And so I showed up to a uh, elementary school gymnasium 
and it was just me and one other person and then an out of state volunteer for the Buttigieg campaign, the Biden campaign and the Sanders campaign. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> fuck. Wow. So they, they had brought in out of state volunteers that outnumbered the participants. Yeah. Just peering over the sh- the shoulders of this one poor voter. Hey, friend. <laughs> and, and she caucused for Warren in the end. So. Oh. <laughs> I take it back. I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> and so that was a very low passion event, um, especially, but even everywhere else for the most part. And one thing that also ended up being kind of a nightmare and that Biden's campaign apparently has thrown a big fit about is that they didn't train their staff for any idea what to do during this second alignment. And so when their groups weren't viable, they just kind of melted and fell apart as opposed to trying to attract people um, to their group. And that seems to have been kind of a key factor in his big collapse. So, so this, this, this first alignment, second alignment thing is like voting uh, like on preference, like you have in, in Europe sometimes, right? Like you... Uh, you take the like the candidates who can win based on their like first round numbers, and then everybody else has to like do some horse trading and decide who they want to like realign with. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. The coalition government of Iowa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate I hate when the Christian Democrats just sweep the right past. Thanks for nothing, Angela Merkel. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And and there's a viability threshold, which almost everywhere is 15 percent, but also isn't everywhere 15 percent, because if you elect fewer than four delegates, the math is different um, because this is a horrible hell system that is made to be complicated. <laughs> yeah, we, we we talked about the caucus system a little bit on Trash Future, and the joke that I made there was that getting everybody together in a room to yell at each other and then vote by show of hands is a system that's so good that it's used in <laughs> like two states of the US and the weird Swiss rural bits where they just all march into the town square with a halberd once a year to decide that women can't vote. <laughs> That seems accurate. Really have fun here. <laughs> Based on these caucuses, they award something called a state delegate equivalent, which I don't know what that is. <laughs> I haven't right. been able to figure it out. Yeah, I don't. I think that that's a black box at some point in the reporting process where they feed in some numbers and then a different number comes out the end. Um, because oh, good. at the precinct caucuses, we just elect county convention delegates. And there are 99 county conventions, and those 99 county conventions elect delegates to a state convention, but they also elect delegates to congressional district conventions. And both the congressional districts and the state convention both elect national delegates. So I don't know what the state delegate equivalents are. Ideal, ideal. <laughs> and you're, and you're, you're only like in charge of uh, like administering part of this process, right? No, it, just it, the like, so so you have sort of like an electoral college running where you have like you're electing electors, and then it predicts how many delegates those electors are going to choose, right? And. For the first time ever, those delegates are locked into their selection. Mm. Um, so I don't know why they're equivalents, because we should be able to know exactly how many state delegates they're going to get if we think about it, right? Um, because you can't change your mind. Yeah, that they, they should have names. You should be able to yell at them. Right. Um, and And so I don't really know what that equation is. I do know, though, that it's designed because the delegates aren't equally distributed, because you don't know how many people are going to caucus everywhere every night, so you can't say every ten people gets a delegate or something, because you don't know how many are going to show up. And so it's based on election turnout in the last two elections, the uh, off-year gubernatorial election and the presidential election. And so, and I know that they include the gubernatorial election because it's meant to uh, lower the effect for uh, the college towns in the urban areas where they have lower turnout in non-presidential years. Mm-hmm. Sure. And uh, people also, this is going to feed into our next question, us idiots who don't understand any of this. <laughs> uh, 
part of the reason why it's hard to predict who's going to show up where is you don't get assigned a caucus, right? You can kind of choose to go and caucus somewhere else, right? No. Um, no? You, you do have to go for your uh, election mm. precinct. Um, and so, like, my precinct is a Tumwa 3, and I usually vote in one building, and I caucus in a different building. Um, the exceptions are, um, the first is that if you volunteer to be the chair for another meeting, then you can caucus at that meeting, which is what I did. Um, or there were these satellite caucuses. Yes, that's what I was going to ask about. Yeah, and some of those were open to anyone. Some of them were closed to only certain people. Um, they were at different times. Um, and Wapolo County had two of those. One of them was open to anyone who pre-registered. And one of them you didn't have to pre-register for, but it was only open to UAW uh, workers at the John Deere plant. That's wild. Ah, that's the, the, that thing we love, a closed shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hoisted by our own petard. We got a, we got a picture of one of the, the satellite caucuses here, right? Was this the... That was, uh, that was the first one, wasn't it? It was, right? In Atumwa, we had the first satellite caucus, um, and I was able to get to be there for that. Um, and that was a really neat thing, um, because we had a lot of folks that were uh, meatpacking plant workers. That was at the UFCW Local 230. Um, mm, it's uh, poultry, right? No, it's pork. It's actually the biggest oh, okay. bacon producing plant in either the world or the country. I would guess the country because I bet China has a bigger one. Good lord. Wow. Huh. Um, I, I, I have an extremely cringe podcaster thing that I did in relation to this uh, with uh, <laughs> a couple of friends in Iowa DSA. I, I helped arrange to get an Order of Lenin medal off of eBay that we're trying to get to the Bernie organizers for this caucus, <laughs> just for standing out in the wind at 2am, uh, trying to like organize uh, like the handbone department or whatever. And they did a great job because they were able to turn out um, mm -hmm. 14 out of the 15 people that showed up there were, uh, were Bernie Sanders supporters. Yeah, I remember seeing the one, the one Warren supporter in the other corner, uh, and then when the the first alignment happened and they're like yeah you, this isn't viable because you have like a 14 to 1 she was just like yeah i'm i'm not i'm not changing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and that was a new feature for this caucus too because in the past um you had to realign with a viable group um, oh you did yeah huh. i think i think there was maybe something where you uh could choose to realign with uncommitted even if they weren't viable i don't remember for sure um, but this is the first year where you could choose to not realign at all. And that did some really horrible things to the math when it came time to figure <laughs> out how many delegates people had. Um, but like half of the caucus hadn't realigned. I like that. I like that. I like the idea of just going down with the ship and you're dumb, non-viable candidate. <laughs> yeah. That's something that speaks to me. Yeah. Have we considered, and I, I, I'm keeping, I'm keeping one eye on the next slide here, which is going to kind of lead into this. Have we considered that the Iowa caucus process is designed to torture the concept of math in the abstract? Yes. Uh, just to, to, just to like <laughs> punish numbers for existing? <laughs> I think there's definitely some truth to that. I also think it's probably designed to just torture people who invest a lot in math. Mm. Um, like one of my favorite features is that when you determine for viable candidates, you round up no matter what the decimal is. Um, so like 1.1 <laughs> 1. 1 rounds up to 2, um, <laughs> which is always agony um, trying to explain uh, when it gets questions. But the uh, the fact that you could you could stay with your unviable candidate wasn't the only change after or for this year, right? After twenty sixteen, right? They they did some more stuff like more explicit logging of the first and second alignments, right? Right. They didn't report those numbers at all in the past, and last year or four years ago, I guess, um, it was pretty obvious that Bernie Sanders had probably won the raw vote counts because he had won all of the um, really big turnout caucuses but he had lost by like a fraction of a percent in state delegate equivalents. Um, and so he had lobbied hard to get that number, those numbers released this year, and they did do that, um, which helps us see a little bit more clearly what happened. That's where the, uh, the he, leads, he leads by 6,000 votes comes from, because that was from the, the first alignment. Mm -hmm. He was 6,000 votes ahead. If this were a regular primary, he would have won quite handily, but now we're, but no. we're here in, um, we're here in hell. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's quite warm. Yeah. It, it, it was it was wise of the campaign to uh to do to keep independent tallies and then just release those as soon as um I I I I'm I'm trying to find a diplomatic way to phrase this as soon as rat mode was activated. <laughs> <laughs> It's not called rat fuckery if it's in Iowa. It's called pig fuckery. Ah, oh, very nice. There's a little bit of like local uh local color there. Right. That's not halal. Or corn fuckery <laughs> if you're a, a vegetarian in halal. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I have a question. Yes. What's going on with this world map here? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's some interesting decor for that union hall i don't know uh oh man look how close greenland is to europe <laughs> look how far Just lurching right south <laughs> america is from africa africa barely reaches the equator Where's the Antarctica? <laughs> it's it, it's just like it, it's a projection designed to irritate everybody who has a strong opinion about any projection. This projection bears no relation to reality whatsoever. Oh Jesus! <laughs> but it's it, fitting the Warren signs underneath it, hun, huh? <laughs> I I like the implication that South Africa's at the same latitude as like <laughs> Venezuela. <laughs> Oh, sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> what What is happening in Australasia? Why is it there? Where did Malaysia and Indonesia go? <laughs> There's no Japan either. That's true. There's a land bridge from Greenland to Canada. <laughs> this is a window into a, a, a different, a very different <laughs> timeline. Uh, We're also, also missing Newfoundland. The, the the caucus hall is a liminal space. Uh, okay, so <laughs> stuff stuff gets weird in there. <laughs> it's a projection where the surveyors rounded up on all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have like that. That's actually continent equivalents. No, Newfoundland and Japan didn't quite reach viability in the first alignment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what being under fifteen feet of snow all the time will do to you. Yeah, we we get. Uh, <laughs> we get Sean Red from uh, from from Newfoundland just can like uh, caucusing for Greenland on his own. <laughs> I'm going rogue, baby. I got, I got another picture here from a bigger caucus. That's a, that's a that's a good picture. Lots of lots of energy there. Lots of action. Very compositionally, uh, very good. I very taken by the woman's expression on the far left there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. yeah. I think that's how we're all feeling. That's pretty much how I feel. <laughs> One thing you'll see in that picture is another thing that's new uh, this time around is they passed out preference cards, which were basically ballots um, where you wrote who you supported and you also wrote your name and phone number on them. Um, and that's going to probably be helpful uh, as they come down to the wire trying to figure out exactly who won. Yeah, I, I just I, I feel bad for various campaign staffers who are now going to have to call every Democrat in Iowa to try to bully them. Doing twi what? Twitter harassment, but over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you just call up voters and, like, spoonerize their names. <laughs> I would also imagine there's way more than a non-zero number of those cards that are not filled out with names on them, or have wrong names, or... Mm. M Mr. IP Freely focused <laughs> for Yang? <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I can say with a degree of confidence that the highest number of spoiled ballots with dumb shit on them will be Andrew Yang ballots. <laughs> <laughs> this just says math six hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> just secure the bag. Speaking uh, of math, that's why Andrew Yang didn't do well because mm. of the math involved. Oh, oh, it hurts. Not as much as reading this hurts me. Th this. I, I'm amazed Liz didn't walk this because this is the most type A personality hall monitor ass. You have literal worksheets. No, <laughs> yeah. Nobody does worksheets except, except for like elementary school teachers. What if we made voting as easy as paying your taxes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to have an if then statement on there. If this caucus oh, elects four God. or more delegates, uh, total eligible caucus oh attendees God. multiplied by 0.15 uh, equals the result, and then you round that 
up whatever it is. Right. And you also notice in the first alignment column that those aren't numbers. No. The 65 through 68 and 41 to 53 and 7 dash 2. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the horse racing odds. <laughs> So I, I guess, Zach, could you tell us a little bit about what the hell is going on here, if you know, because I don't. Yeah. So this is one that I pulled from a New York Times article because I didn't want to put any of my uh, nice volunteers <laughs> on blast too much. Understandable. Yeah. W was this the one that Pete Buttigieg's comms guy just Pete? tweeted out <laughs> with his pin on it? And God damn it, dude. Oh, 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 no, that, that censored. Censored. <laughs> no, I think he. I think he literally just he 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 tweeted it out and like that with like his login details on it and everything. It, it redacted. Yeah. yeah, but the app didn't work anyway, so I think he was probably okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what's happening here, I guess, is when you got to the first alignment, you had to count everybody, um, and that's where you fill in the total number of eligible attendees. 15% uh, of that is your viability threshold. So in this case, 38.1, which rounds up to 39. Um, and then you had everyone break but into groups. That's not how math works. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's how it works on caucus night, though. Oh, um, God. In Iowa, that's how it works. Uh, and then, so you had them break into groups, um, and every group that had more than 39 was viable. Um, you were supposed to write the exact number of people in each group, which doesn't seem to have happened here. Um, and then where it says awarding delegates, after they did the second alignment and all the non-viable people either got into a group or went home, um, then you counted up how many viable group or how many people are in each viable group, and then you do these sort of chains of calculations, and it is supposed to produce a number um, that is the number of delegates that they get. Are we certain that this isn't a plot by, like, Texas Instruments? That's a long <laughs> con right there. You, you, you see here they screwed up the number of delegates they thought they were going to elect at first. Right. <laughs> it also it, it also has God. my least favorite thing, which is like the horizontal divisor symbol, because it sucks. Um, it's yeah, just incredibly unclear. Yeah, but then you'd have unclear. to like, have a line break to have like a one over Still. everything. Yeah, you can't print those. Yeah, that's Come what on they now. should do. <laughs> <laughs> it Just should to make be it that much harder to use. Four times ten over <laughs> two <laughs> five four. In fact, you know what? Get get rid of the times. It should be a parentheses. <laughs> you right? found the only way to make this more difficult to use. Uh I, I'm a big fan personally of the like uh all of the stuff along the bottom, like uh having color coded forms, things of that nature. Uh I cause I love paperwork and you know I <laughs> That's the most British fucking thing I've ever heard. I love to do math. I love to retain a copy for my records. I love to like insert the yellow form into the blue envelope and uh then send that one along with the pink sheets to the you can come down in four years and chair a meeting. Oh, please, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and then another really kind of fun fact is that sometimes when you get through with all of the math and you add up the number of delegates that you're supposed to distribute, and you can't quite see it, it's cropped off here, I guess, that doesn't always equal the number of delegates you actually have to award. Um, and so there's some tie-breaking scenarios that come into play then. The coin toss. <laughs> Where you either give an extra delegate to a certain group or take away a delegate from a group. The coin toss is the most infuriating fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the the fucking the fucking uh booster judge guy who turned the coin over <laughs> in his hand. That was a great video. I, yeah, that that will stay with me till I fucking die. I ugh. What do you know? Pete rolled a natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like if, if if you have an extra delegate to award, it's like you you give you you give that delegate to the person with the second most with, with the second most delegates whose second digit is the highest, right? Uh huh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Why not? Is that I can't tell if you're joking or not anymore. 
It's definitely something weird like that. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I think it's like whoever you had to round the least amount oh. gets the delegate. Oh, this um, is horrible. Why did you do this to yourself and like volunteer to do this? <laughs> No, 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 no precedence. Even, even Bernie is worth this much math. We'll just draw straws out of a hat. Fuck it. And to be clear, to be clear about this, right? This is before the app that we're talking about as the disaster. Yeah, exactly. And, like, yeah. It, this, if this so far is with all of the John Maddening on it, is working perfectly <laughs> as designed. Yes, exactly. And with 22 precincts, 21 of them got all of this exactly right in Waplo County. Uh, Jesus. One of them, they did mess up. They had a realignment, even though all of their groups were already viable. And they let people change groups, but it didn't affect the number of delegates in the end anyway. So I still give them half points. But I was still I was really impressed. They all got through this and it wasn't even the bad part. Yeah, I, uh, oh, I have a headache. Uh, amazing. So let's go to the bad part. Let's talk about the Iowa Democratic Party's app. Yes. <laughs> More like crap. Am oh, I right? The, the, did you have to find the picture of head office just designed to give us all depression. It's really sad on the inside, too. I had to work there uh, in 2012. I had an office inside I'm that sorry. building. I'm so, I'm so sorry. And it's right across the street from the Des Moines International Airport, which is one of those airports that's international by virtue of one international flight to Canada every oh, day. Oh, yeah, like we talked about. Yeah. yeah. You, could, you could go to Winnipeg. Still counts. <laughs> did, did the building used to be a like a Long John Silver's? I don't know, but it would make sense to have been a fast food restaurant. It has the vibe, like the roof and the like siding and everything, very, very strongly. Like I, I, I just picture like all of these overworked staffers just like trying to take notes on like a fryer or something. You know, you get someone with a hammer to go up here and like hammer down this piece of flashing <laughs> that's peeling up. That may be a problem in a couple that's, years. That's that, that's that's really bothering you, huh? Yeah, well, you know, again, it's it's going to start leaking. It's, the Iowa Democratic Party is going to start leaking. That's that's a worry <laughs> a couple of years from now. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we'll talk about the app, right? So let me get for, according to the New York Times, right? The app was like really like secret before the actual uh, caucus, right? Yeah. Um, mm. They asked that the, even the name be withheld from the public, right? Right. To be fair, that's because the name's fucking embarrassing. Well. Yes, <laughs> and it was also so secret that it wasn't really made available to all of the people who were supposed to use it on time. Um, oh, of course. They told us there would be an app, but they didn't want to show it to us or let us download it too early. And then when people decided they did want to finally download it on the day of, it was too late, and they had already shut down uh, setting up new accounts. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 I just think just thinking about the the photo that they posted uh, like a year ago of their staff, their team and th this bunch of like smiling soy face millennials with their like still with her stickers on their laptops and like just really thinking about that to keep my hate pure in the, in this time. <laughs> I am proud of you. Um, thank you. That takes effort and dedication. Yeah, I, I just uh, we we should find that image if we can because it it just like. <sighs> but there's like like ninety percent of the people who needed to use this app are like eighty years old, right? <laughs> yeah, there were yeah. a lot of people who uh, either by age or just other stuff had no idea how to get an app, and this wasn't even something you bought on the app store. This had to no. Of course. You had to download Test Flight, and then it would install with a special link a uh, like just beta version of the app that you could log in and use. To talk through a bunch of rural Iowans through jailbreaking the iPhones that they <laughs> obviously all have. Uh, yeah, it's it's easy. It's fine. Like you know, you know. Can you install this on Jitterbug? <laughs> <laughs> and it had two-factor authentication and the default version of that was to scan a qr code 
Oh, um, God. <laughs> oh, my God. There is a real problem in uh, the Democratic Party's national establishment's understanding of digital infrastructure versus how most Americans actually live, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah. It, well, they've probably never actually left Washington, D.C., except to go to New York City. Maybe Cal- maybe maybe to go to San Francisco once or twice. Arlington counts. The farthest they've been into the country is Dulles Airport. Yeah, you know, you know what they should have done? They should have contracted out all of the hardware for this to Megatronics. Yes. Um, yeah, we would have gotten it done right on time and with a free samurai sword. Yes, <laughs> you absolutely have to give this to the most representative tech business and incubator in suburban and rural America, a small town, uh, irregular hours. York is not a small town. <laughs> <laughs> irregular hours, aftermarkets, car, uh, audio store. That just also sell samurai swords. They yeah. would have had it done in two weeks, and it would have been done right. Yeah. <laughs> they also paid sixty three thousand dollars for the app, which is both too much and too little for something like this. Mm, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going to go next. Uh, also, to understand the Megatronics joke, please consider subscribing to our Patreon so you can listen to the bonus episode about Liam's van. Thank you. Um, anyway, <laughs> also please buy my van. That's why. I, why? That's why I worked that one in there as a little bit of marketing. So, um, this, the, the app, right, is developed by a company called Shadow, right? That sounds good. Yeah, pe- pe- people think the app is called Shadow. The app isn't called Shadow. The app is called, I think it's just like, Iowa Electoral App or something? Yeah, Iowa Reporting App. Iowa Reporting App, dot exe, dot text, uh, underscore final. Wait. IRA dot exe. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you get it off LimeWire or something, and it's like definitely not a virus, and you just brick your parents' computer. I just like the idea that they're like, okay, in order to provide more transparency to the uh, caucusing process, we're going to hire a company called Shadow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have brought in Rasal Ghul from McKinsey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as Zach said, they they. They spent $63,000 for this app, and the company really screwed the pooch, right? Of course, in, 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 in Iowa, that would be a pig instead of a pooch, <laughs> yeah. just idiomatically. That's a good point, yes. It's built on top, according to Motherboard, it was built on top of a platform called um, React Native, which is an open source app development package released by Facebook, can be used on both <laughs> Android and <laughs> iOS. Oh. No love for Microsoft Photo S, huh? Uh, no, it's th- that's like one step above fucking. Do you remember Newgrounds and like Flash games? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like y- y- you, you, you log into this with your two-factor authentication, and you have to like sit through a bunch of stick figures fighting each other with swords. Oh man, that was a lot of wasted <laughs> hours of my youth. Hell yeah! Oh, tell me about I, it. Yeah. I heard unconfirmed reports. I, I heard somewhere. Th- did the app have ads on it? It didn't have ads for me, uh, but okay. I also <laughs> never got to log in. So oh, good. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, according to, I'm going to get this pronunciation wrong. Kazra Rajjeri uh, it's said, "It's got a D in there." Red, it, Raj, it, Raj, Raj, Raj Jerdy. That's that, that's probably right. Yeah, I yeah. We we apologize. We apologize. Uh, yes. The contains default React Native metadata, and then it comes off as a very 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 off the shelf skeleton project plus add your own code sort of thing. You know, it's like the app was clearly done by someone following a tutorial, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait until. Uh, some intrepid reporter digs up the wiki how that they got this off of. <laughs> <laughs> Just complete with the like fucked up line art that they have. As as uh, as Zach mentioned, of course they distributed through Test Flight or Test Ferry or whichever one it was, and you had to go through this big process to get it right. The link stopped working as of the day after the primary, so no one could really get a look at this app unless you were actively using it. Which, uh, unsuspicious, right? Like, I, I, I feel like a lot of what we're going to be talking about is uh, how did they build something that simultaneously evokes 
both malice and incompetence. <laughs> According to Twitter user at Tony on the Tweeter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Mike name. I know he's a Tony, but in spiritual, spiritually, this is Mike energy. Yes. He, uh, he, he, he told me, um, because he looked over the notes, uh, $63,182, which is what they spent on the app, isn't buying you months of development, which is what the, uh, the I believe the Iowa Democratic Party told the, um, or maybe it was the DNC, told one of the news outlets, I think the New York that's Times. That's like a week, maybe. How long it took. Yeah, hmm. he said that's, um, that's 630 man hours at central Pennsylvania prices. <laughs> Oh, good. That's... <laughs> so that's my people. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do math in my head here because, and and the form that we looked at, the worksheet has just fucked that part of my brain. So <laughs> I, 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 it's about seven people working uh, ten eight-hour days. Oh, thank you. That's helpful. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's not a lot of work. No. <laughs> it, or rather, it it both is and isn't. It's it's a lot of work for something that should be counting numbers off of worksheets that people send in, but it's also not a lot of work for a, a electoral application. It it would have been a very good deal if it had worked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. That's, that's just frugal. Yeah. So yeah, to further uh, the weird distribution process, uh, someone said it was supposed to make it more secure, which it wasn't, you know, and they're installing this app on, you know, random grandma personal phones, right? Yeah, it's going on to Nokia N-Gages that somebody still has. Oh, that'd be sick. I'd be jealous of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah uh, th this app in was live for like a day, and I guarantee you in that time it was installed to a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the Zune was good. You stand the Zune. <laughs> the Zune was better than the iPod. That is objectively true. He had a radio. I, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm not getting into this. With I'll you. get into this with you. <laughs> 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 All right. So the, the, they basically they they gave this app out to. Uh, so wait, they they made this really hard to access uh, and really like opaque on the basis that oh well maybe you know like bad actors. Like fucking Vladimir Putin or whoever can't get his hands on our app and then sent it to uh, fucking like every single Iowans uh, who was every single Iowan caucus like precinct person's fucking Zoom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so v Vladimir Putin was supposed to was supposed to be able to hack the app store. But not your grandma's Zoom. Yes. Not not like a weird like sixty year old man who like chairs a a caucus and has like the the virtual desktop stripper on his yes. desktop computer or bonsai yeah. buddy or something like that. Yeah. Putin can can't hack that. Can hack the app store though. That that's probably true. Actually, <laughs> like it's too like all of the software is too obsolete and idiosyncratic. All of the folders are just named stuff like things I need or stuff. <laughs> like every time he tries to browse, there's like an inch of actual website, and the rest is just toolbars. <laughs> <laughs> we won the Cold War. We've done it. We've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that that kind of like boomer internet usage. Maybe that is more secure. I don't know. Hey, Dad, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Iowa Democratic Party, which uh, when they sent me out to do some canvassing in 2016, they gave everyone video iPods in gel cases um, on which they had installed uh, the app that you used to do the canvassing, and then you just had to go to McDonald's or whatever and get on the Wi-Fi and upload your canvassing <laughs> results from your video iPod. Oh my god. Oh my I'm, god. I'm just thinking about the contrast between that and the thing I saw from uh, a Bernie volunteer, where they just posted a photo of this parking lot full of rental vans, and it was just like, hey, we're canvassing, everybody got a van. Uh, yeah, I was <laughs> very, very covetous, as you can imagine. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, but that seems so much more useful. Like to have like a, a 
instead of a fucking like uh, a, an iPod with a special app, you just get a Ford Econ line. <laughs> Shit! What if the, what if they just used a van instead of this app? You know, maybe we would be we would not be in this situation. You send the same number of vans to the parking lot outside the Iowa Democratic Party as delegates you had elected. <laughs> Just all Van Caucus, yeah. Yeah. There's kind of a funny joke for, I guess, political, what do you call them, field organizers, in that the app that the I or that the National Democratic Party has for canvassing is called Van, the Voter Activation Network. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this shadow company was owned by another company or a nonprofit actually called Acronym, right? Air America Enterprises. Yes. Flowers, flowers by Irene. According to Vox, acronym describes itself as a values-driven organization focused on advancing uh, progressive causes through innovative communications, advertising, and organizing programs. It is also a 501c4 nonprofit, so donations to it don't need to be reported. Great. It, it's also it's also registered. Its registered address is the same as um, Shadows. And it's in a WeWork in Nova, uh, tw- 12 minutes away from, from Langley. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, it's a little bit much, is all I'm saying. Burn down Northern Virginia. Yeah. Sorry, well, Apparently, buddy. FEC uh, filings show that acronyms, uh, political action, what, what's it called? Is, is PAC stands for... It's PAC, yeah, it's Political Action Committee. Their their PAC is called PACronym, of course. God damn it, dude. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. The, the one thing that has character about them, and it's twee. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the Thunderdome, Acronym would like to join the Punderdome. <laughs> they got, they got a one and a half million dollars from billionaire hedge fund guy, Seth Klarman. They got a million dollars from Michael Moritz, who's a venture capitalist. Oh my they god! Five hundred thousand oh, dollars from Steven Spielberg. The, um, they got something from the uh, founder of Soul Cycle. Oh my god! Uh, I, well, one of the founders of Uber. Uh, just all of the dumbest people uh, investing invested in this. The uh, the owner was like a real enthusiastic Pete Buttigieg guy, right? Mm-hmm. Also a former Obama staffer. I believe the Pod Save America guys are somehow involved. I never quite figured that out. Yeah, they went. They went to. They went to the uh, uh, her birthday party, and then, like on Twitter, as recently as yesterday, were pretending not to know her name. Oh, of course. Oh my god. It, it's very, very bad. Also, just as a parenthesis, I do want to mention, and this is the thing that will get me uh, killed in like a small aircraft accident. My favorite obvious CIA front in Northern Virginia. Uh, is something called the Good Food Company that someone found uh, when I did a thread about what's an obvious front business near you. And it's the creepiest fucking thing I've ever seen. It's just like a block of Northern Virginia office space with like mirrored windows, white vans, and there's one picture of food on their website and it looks like shit. I Terrifying. <laughs> someone, please uh, find out what is going on with them. But they do really actually have the DC schools cafeteria contract anyway. Yeah, I <laughs> that that would be the most DC thing is you're just eating like CIA meatloaf. <laughs> it's fine. It tastes fine. <laughs> we put nothing. You don't in, need to know what's in it. Nothing bad. The CIA is your friend. The CIA cannot hurt you. <laughs> it only hurt hurt foreigners. Yeah. The FBI. Will hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes both, though. Thanks, Cartel Pro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know that Pete Buttigieg's campaign. Butt Chug. Pete Butt Chug's campaign, yes, paid. Yes! <laughs> paid Shadow $42,500 for software rights and subscriptions. Supposedly, this has nothing to do with the app, of course. The, the, they weren't the only one, although they were the most glaring. I think Klobuchar's campaign paid them. Uh, I, I think Biden's might have as well. Yeah, both both of them paid him. These these big ticket donations, or well, not even donations. These big invoices, and then the the like um, the memo or whatever is just like software or like computer. Uh, it's like yeah, cool. Um, 
I, I mean, with Biden, I write that off because he doesn't know what a computer is, and so he just like thinks that they, you know, they that they send the ones and zeros to them and they mark them with a big stamp or something. Yeah, it's just my it's just uh, my mom being like, "Oh, are you having fun playing video games with your friends?" Like, no, I'm playing Civ. Are you winning, son? I'm playing Civ. <laughs> there is no winning, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden thinks of computers. He thinks of a big like tape drive, series of tape yeah. drives against a wall. There's like ticker tape coming at the end. That would be pretty cool, though. We should bring reels to reels back. I, I agree with you on that. I also one, yeah. agree with you on that. <laughs> so the, the app. What a, what a beautiful app. These pictures were provided to me by Zach. Zach, could you tell us about your experience with the app? Yeah, what um, it was. <laughs> so the left picture is some version of uh when my partner got on test flight to download uh the app um worked fine i guess the app ended up on her phone um and then the middle picture is uh attempting to log in by entering the uh precinct id number and Redacted. the third picture is an excellent image that just says oops something went wrong um which is very true big, <laughs> big big fan of the exclamation mark comma <laughs> formatting uh, oh god oh god <laughs> wow it's yeah, like gotta... it's, it's 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 like the the siding on on the roof of the headquarters once you notice it you can't not it's, it's like the or or the um or the world map yeah, uh, I I think that they fucked up the transparency on the Iowa Democratic Party logo at the top there. It just says Io. Well, Ow. see, that's cute. That's that's supposed to be cutesy. Oh my god! Wow. Uh, yeah, it says Io <laughs> Io Democratic Party. No, you know what it is? It's because this is like a whole circle here, right? <laughs> yep. Oh, oh it's a shit. and and the Iowa is is too high. To be in oh, the middle they where didn't it should be. The, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't you feel foolish? <laughs> <sighs> this is this is the kind of thing that we truly love to see. Uh. <laughs> in fairness, no one was supposed to see the "Oops, something went wrong" page. Oh, certainly, this is not a well done error message. <laughs> And then everyone saw the oops, something went wrong page. Um, there could be a misconfiguration in the system. Or a service outage. Uh, and They had both, right? By my understanding? Yes. Um, it was impossible for me and a lot of people to ever log into the app to report their results. Um, and then I guess they also had an issue with the coding so that when people put in results and then those results went into the computer, um, they didn't all go into the computer, only some of them. Um, which is why the initial results were really wrong. Mm. Fun fact that I do happen to know about this is that the back end, uh, if you do succeed in getting those numbers into it, literally just goes into a Google, essentially a Google Drive. Uh, Oh my god. That's fantastic. Which is fully controlled by Shadow. It, literally, it, no joke, it is the same thing we use to organize the notes for Trash Future. It just goes into a big Google document spreadsheet, Jesus which fuck. only Shadow has access to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can see why this is not, this is not ideal. Uh, luckily it didn't work, so that kind of cancelled itself out. Yeah, I was about to say it's a good it's a good thing it didn't work, or you know, someone would have gone in there and um <laughs> well, done something nefarious. And just changed all the votes to Pete Buttigieg. This could have been really really dangerous if it hadn't been so incompetent. <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> my favorite was like uh when results started getting screwed up, um, because they transposed a bunch of them. One column left. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, uh, oh. you ended up with Sanders' votes going to Devol Patrick. N no one actually knows who that person is. He was is. a governor of Massachusetts. Governor of Massachusetts. <laughs> so, as we say, nobody knows who he is. Yeah, I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, well, you know, you 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 lived in Massachusetts. Mm. None of the rest of us I'm, have. I'm unlocking some more Liam lore here. Yes, hit me. Sorry, I needed to chug the whole beer at once because I'm so goddamn sick of Pete butt chug. <laughs> I did not butt chug the beer. I might add. No, because that would be giving him giving him legitimacy. Yeah, that's what he wants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so the app was bad, um, and then this is a picture that, uh, Zach sent me of the inside of the Iowa Democratic Party, right? Right. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> you, you, you were right, they really do need to fix that siding, because if they get a leak- <laughs> Why don't you people have filing cabinets? <laughs> uh, instructions aren't clear, filing cabinets, budget spent on apps. I, this is genuinely like the inside of every campaign office, though, like or yeah, committee. I so okay. Here, here's a story about me that'll get me canceled because I can say anything now <laughs> because I'm banned from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> In my senior year of high school, part of the government class was we had to do, I believe, an hour of volunteer work for a political campaign, right? And it was the Virginia. I think our our representative was up for election, right? And so we could go go work for the campaign, right? And so we had two options, right? The Democrats had feel goods and you know they they you know that you were you you were working for like, you know, the, the people with the right opinions and the Republicans had free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Which campaign? <laughs> I went to go campaign for the Republicans. Of course. And it looked exactly like this. <laughs> Except with a few more, uh, a few more uh, desk fonts. I, I, I so badly want to see, the, uh, like, in, in, uh, in a resolution high enough to be able to see what the sign just dimo taped to the wall in the back says. I want to know what can that is on the desk next to the. Is that pizza? I. We've already I, established Democrats don't have pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> So I, I I guess Zach, could you could you tell us what's going on in this picture exactly? Um, so I didn't take it. It was uh, off of an article uh, published somewhere, and they say that those boxes are voter registration forms, and that this was a office inside of the IDP headquarters sometime Tuesday. Um, and I don't know exactly what happened to get it in the state where things were torn up. I can't imagine that maybe someone <laughs> chose to tore those things up uh, in a heated gamer it's moment. Points to, um, <laughs> po po points to cryptid involvement. I'm thinking like the same thing as the Dyatlov Pass thing. You, you perversely like shred your own voter registration forms and then run into a ravine. Uh, but I'm also open to like the possibility of Mothman involvement. <laughs> Just trying to stabilize this one column of boxes here that's falling over. <laughs> oh, that's Best that's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do know that when I was trying to call in results on uh, Monday night, that around eleven o'clock I was on hold and my phone rang from the IDP headquarters in Des Moines, so I answered it, and there was a guy who was in a room that was so loud. And that he couldn't hear me try to answer his questions. Um, and I would... <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> he, he said that there were too many volunteers in the room and that he couldn't hear me and that he couldn't go anywhere else and he asked me to be louder. And so I was yelling and yelling in my room as people were coming into my house to drop off more uh, packets of results. And then I asked if he could stay on the line to receive my results and he just told me no and hung up. Um, and in that yes. time, my call on the other line, which was on hold, got answered, and I wasn't there for it, so I had to start being on hold all over again. And I just uh, imagined that this oh guy was God. in this room, um, but I don't know that. That's... that's brutal. Uh... <laughs> and I, I... I feel like this is, like... This is the part that's pure incompetence, right, at the state party level. Uh, is you have this like weird, 
rat app and then the rat app breaks and you just have to like have 50 people in a room screaming at each other until results happen and the results are then wrong because everyone's screaming and no one can hear right and the spreadsheet columns are right laid out in yeah. a way where you could give deval patrick all the votes um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it it is very very. It's perilously close to making the the meme that I get slightly tired of that comes up every election cycle, where you just put Jeb Bush <laughs> with a hundred percent of the votes uh, over the election. That's map. real life now, Alice. Yeah. Oh, in, incidentally, speaking of electoral maps, I looked at a map of the counties of Iowa, which um, I, I I'm going to bully Justin to bring up on screen because it. It upset me badly. <laughs> I, I I need to know why your counties are laid out the way that they are. Um, your 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 state has screen tearing. You need to update your video drivers. <laughs> I think I might know what the answer is to the the issue you're going to raise, but I want to make sure I know. Uh, well, I I think it's I think it's that you have to turn you have to get into the back of the IDP offices and turn VSync off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need. I guess I. I need a more. It's. It's more visible. Like, um, black and white. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But. But where the counties uh, aren't square because they kind of jog over left. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's the one. It's a the where you have like a printer head alignment arrow. Yeah, it's because uh, the Earth is a globe, and they tried to draw Iowa as a grid. Um. Uh, and so they had to correct so for the curvature of the Earth. By Man, Iowa just going zero for two on maps in this episode. <laughs> uh, I was about to say because uh, Iowa, the, the Earth is flat, so you know. Oh, okay, um, mm. <laughs> but Iowa I, I, is I round. I, so my my favorite part is the the precisely ninety nine counties, one of which straight up in the middle there is that Kossuth. Kossuth is two of the, that row of counties. But it, and it could be two counties, and you would have a hundred counties. But you don't. You have yeah. ninety nine counties, and one of them is just double the thing. There's Warren yeah. County down here, which is obvious electoral bias. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Clinton County somewhere too, I think. Um, which Bernie won? Oh, yeah, over yeah, there, right, right the, out on yeah. the uh, right out on the middle of the east. Bernie yeah. won in yeah. 2016, if I recall correctly, because he won all of the Clinton counties in the United States. Yep, Joe, Joe, Joe Biden winning Delaware. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like. There's a Delco here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so Bla- Blackhawk, two to the two to the west of of Delco. That that's where they had the most egregiously, or at least the most loudly fucked up results, right? Yeah. Um, Chris Schwartz there is a county supervisor, and I used to live in Blackhawk County. I went to college at the University of Northern Iowa, go Panthers. Um, and uh, he's a great guy, and he just kind of loudly broadcast that his results were right and theirs were wrong, um, and did a good job with that. Uh, that rules. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Kasuth County, I do know that there were 100 counties at one point, but no one lived in one of those two counties, and so they <laughs> had to combine them. Um, huh. For practical governing purposes, <laughs> I I don't think they should have. I think they should have just had a sinecure. I want to be I want to be like the the state representative for a county with nobody in it. You still uh, lose, but to yourself somehow. <laughs> yeah, I, I I want that job. I don't uh, want that person in charge. That guy's an asshole. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate when I campaign campaign against myself, and then high schoolers volunteer for my opponent because pizza. <laughs> That's for nothing, Roz. <laughs> Look, the Republican <laughs> lost. I did nothing. I my 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 bad decision. You were more of a no hindrance. Of, yeah, yeah, I was a hindrance. <laughs> you were <laughs> a saboteur. I'm yeah, proud I was not of you, good actually. at calling people. How was the pizza though? Uh, like, what what was the pizza situation? It was mediocre, uh, but it was the only time I ever saw a train on the. Um, there's this sort of there's this sort of uh, urban branch line in Alexandria, Virginia, which hmm. um, goes through a park, which is weird hmm. because it's like just rails in grass, and sometimes a freight train comes through. I was like, ah, this is gonna run over a kid one day. 
Uh, it was the only time I ever saw a train on that branch line was when I was campaigning for what's his face Republican guy. Um, Strange. So it, was, it was worth it for the train spotting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's the, one of the last remnants of the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad, which is still in service in any way. The Wadr. Yes. The the Wad the Wad Railroad. The W and O D. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> the, the, it's, it's still there to deliver paper to one of the Washington Post printing facilities. Mm. So speaking of paper, we have this giant heap. Of registration forms and we have all of the like special worksheets and we also have all of the cards that people filled out possibly signing them as ip freely or whatever my question is with all of those and the time and the will and a surprising burst of competence from somewhere can the party fix it like will they ever be able to certify results if they actually have all of those if any of those things got lost... If they don't fall off the back of a truck. And the result is too close, then they might yeah. not be able to. If, if, if any of the like vans stop over an overpass and like accidentally a bunch of boxes <laughs> go into a river, uh, you know, that, that I could see that being a problem, I guess. Yeah. And one thing that I know is going to be an issue if they have to recount is that I had a heck of a time making sure that everyone knew that they had to give me all of the cards, not just the ones that were used, because the cards mm. were numbered, and if you didn't give me all of the cards, then you couldn't say that someone didn't use one of the cards to vote, and that it's missing. Ah, I see. Um, you just throw away, yeah, that makes sense. And I would imagine other places might not have all of the cards. So I, I'm just trying to go through the, the exactly what had happened here, right? They, they announced some results but they were wrong, and everyone got very mad at them. Mm -hmm. um, so then they they announced patch notes for the <laughs> for the for the election, uh, and then people still got mad at them. And people uh, like your colleague in Blackhawk County were you uh, just posting their results because they couldn't get on the phone uh, and they couldn't like use the app, mm -hmm. um, and then finally they decided that they were gonna like take back the votes to do quality control <laughs> on the votes is that is, is that right so far pretty much yeah um they were supposed to do quality checks um and that there was a big promise of quality checks at every step um but then they kept releasing results that were wrong so yeah i i, I don't think of quality assurance as being something that you need a lot of for a vote like it you just look at the number. You you don't have to like interrogate how finely rounded the number is, right? But uh, I I I don't know. I I I guess they need more time to like polish and like it's a it's a when it's done kind of election. Yeah, and I mean, I guess they did probably have to do some of the math, right? Because they had to check and make sure the math was done correctly as part of the mm. quality checks. Um, I'm assuming. Hopefully, at some point, somebody checks the math. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, and it doesn't introduce another bunch of like specious <laughs> errors, and we find out that Marianne Williamson somehow got you know ninety percent of the vote. Right. He said, he said Marion there, and I, I immediately my mind shot to Marion Barry. Same. I was like, that would that would be pretty funny. Marion yeah. Barry wins Iowa inexplicably. <laughs> 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 R.I.P. Um, yeah. RIP to a real one. Yes. Um, so, uh, right, yeah, and it was like, what, today they announced that, like, okay, we're going to extend the deadline for complaining about problems to Monday. Yeah, yeah. and Tom Perez, the uh, DNC chairman, uh, said that they were going to reassess the votes. People got very mad at him, so then he said that that doesn't mean that they were going to recount the votes, just like look at them while quizzically scratching their heads and holding the paper at a slightly different angle. And then the <laughs> IDP got very mad at him and said that he didn't even have standing to make them do that, and they didn't want to. So I, I don't 
so it, it, it's basically like you may as well have cancelled the election because the purpose of it in terms of like determining momentum or whatever politically is just now gone it's <laughs> it's just now it's just contested right i that's probably pretty fair right because only it's worse because there are people who are able to say that they won that didn't win and then there are people who did win that I can't say that they won. Yes. Rat, rat, rat problems. And they all spent tons and tons of money. Uh, yeah. So it was like yeah. some kind of producer's type gambit, maybe, yeah. to just take all of their campaign money. Uh, yeah, so th this, was, this was an incredibly expensive way of uh, essentially cancelling an election. Uh, and all it cost was the sixty thousand dollars for the app and the legitimacy of Iowan public democracy. Uh, that doesn't seem like a great deal to me. <laughs> Maybe I, I I I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I think you can talk about incompetence for sure with the state party, but I'm a little skeptical of the the conspiracy theory part of it, just because you're talking about mm. a state party that has been laser focused on keeping Iowa first at the expense of almost every other issue. Um, and so I can't really imagine that they would deliberately mess up so badly, um, but you can definitely talk about whether they were uh, taken advantage of or just massively incompetent. Um, and those are fair uh, mm. points to make. Uh, never attribute to malice <laughs> what can adequately be explained by incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> So, with, with that in mind, I'm I'm trying to think what other states have caucuses because Nevada and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I think. Ah, okay. I, I I remember Nevada being a lot of horse trading with like hotel unions and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. But next we have New Hampshire, right? Uh. And that's just like an actual primary that people just put a cross in a ballot paper. And like put that in a box, and then they count the number of things in the box, right? Bernie's gonna win, except in Dixville yeah. Notch, where everybody shows up at midnight and votes, and then their votes are oh, immediately I, opened. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, we're talking about Innsmouth here. Yeah. It's not going to be normal, whatever <laughs> happens. But like, <laughs> relatively speaking, on a on a procedural level, uh, it, it's more, it's more. Rat proof. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is part of the episode where my audio cut out because my computer crashed because I assume I flew too close to the sun and Pete Buttigieg took it out. Um, so I'm going to skip directly to the commercials that everyone did. And we're going to, you know, we, we also did the Tacoma Narrows Bridge joke, which is usual. Um, and I also want to say, look, I, I haven't watched the debates, but Bernie's going to crush New Hampshire. Um, I assume in the debates he, like, I don't know, uh, killed Andrew Yang with a mech suit in a show of force, which I assume is going to be very good for him going forward. So, anyway, um, this is the end of the podcast, or in a few minutes it will be. Okay. Um, listen to Trash Future, we just did an episode about sort of the macro thing of this, where we weren't talking so much about the app and... Uh, what happened, but about the Democratic Party's weird class of uh, consultants and data freaks and nerds, oh. <laughs> uh, and how how they they engineered this uh, in the metaphorical rather than literal sense. Uh, I guess I'll go next. Uh, Liam Anderson, continue, please, to subscribe to the Patreon through these trying times, considering. Uh, uh, do not eat got his ass cancelled uh, in defense of my mother uh, <laughs> who I know appreciates it thanks buddy <laughs> um, and I yeah, we, we are all carrying a big picture of Justin <laughs> and we are chanting Yashahid <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> oh, um, and I'm Zach Simonson IA on Twitter um, and we are the Wapolo County Democrats on Act Blue. I think it's W 
CDCC, Wapolo County Democrats Central Committee, very Soviet on Act Blue. If you want to <laughs> chip in a couple bucks for the people who got the caucus right, we'd really appreciate it. Mm, absolutely do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Cheers. Bye.